the light and were afraid. But they had not the voice of him that spoke to me. The value of every encounter is in the word that comes along with it. In John 20, when Jesus rose from the dead, verse 18, Mary Magdalene told the disciples that he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. He had spoken. So every encounter speaks. Every genuine encounter speaks. And so while the doors were shut, Jesus showed up <laughs> and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Every time he shows up, he says something. He says something. Then the same day at the evening, when he went, okay, verse 20 now. And then, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his feet. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21. And then said Jesus to them again. So every appearance says something. Peace be unto you as my father has sent me. So send I you. That's where their confidence came from. I'm sending you after my passion. As the father has sent me. So watch out for the voice that comes across through the resurrected Christ as you have encounters with him. It's not in the uh, drama. They saw the light. They were afraid. They told the story when they got home. One light just struck today and one man was uh, done and he couldn't see again. Thank God they escaped. They had not the voice. So it had no value to them. They had not the voice. And so, there was not a coming out of it. Now, in John 21 verse 5, Peter had gone uh, fishing. He was already missing his way. <laughs> Jesus said, now you have gone your way. Have you any man? They said, no. We saw good. <laughs> we have been struggling. Okay, cast your net on the right side. And then, a breakthrough came. Every divine encounter comes along with a voice. Imagine if the, all that the Lord showed me was a lineup of afflicted people groaning, agonizing, and he said nothing. It was be a drama. I said, why, Lord? He said, but from the beginning it was not so. A voice always comes along with a divine encounter. I said, but why, Lord? He said, and now the hour has come to liberate the world. From all oppression of the devil, through the preaching of the word of faith, and I'm sending you to undertake this task. Every true encounter comes along with a voice. But you can't catch the voice of the Spirit without being a man of the Spirit. I was in the Spirit on the last day, and I heard. You can't hear except you are in the Spirit. Divine encounter is God's agenda. Joseph said, I die. But my God, he said, God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto a land that is sworn to Abraham Isaac. God will surely visit you. And he did. I heard your cry and your groaning and I'm come down. To bring you out. Hear what Jesus said. In John. Chapter 20. Or John chapter 14 please. And verse 18. Jesus speaking said. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Verse 19. 
Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye will continue to see me because I, because I live, you shall live also. And verse 20, he said, At that day ye shall know that I am in my father, and my father is in me, and I in you. Now, he that has my commandments and keeps it, is the one that loves me, and is that loves me with love of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So I'm still here. That's the meaning. That is what you must do to make me manifest myself to you. You just do it. Amen. I will not leave you comfortless. I promise to come to you. I will come to you. And after he rose from the dead, he came to them and showed himself alive 40 days. And Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are going to see him. Amen. He will open to each one that is expectant doors, strange doors Amen. of change of stories Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, to qualify for an encounter with the resurrected Christ, one must engage in the study of the world because Christ is the world and dwells in the world. In the beginning was the world, John 1, 1 to 3, the world was it God, and the world was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And that word became flesh, verse 14, and his name, Jesus. So, he is the word and dwells in the world. Every valid encounter is traceable to the world. And the Lord appeared again unto Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. There are many, many of us who have had diverse experiences of his appearance through his word. Do I have a witness this morning? I mean, that God told me. How? From his word. God told me. He just showed up in his world. As we behold him. Amen. With open face as in the glass. The glory of the Lord. We are changed. He just shows up through the world. With changes us. Glory to God. So the more we settle with the world, the greater the opportunity to have encounter with the resurrected Christ. For that's where he dwells. He dwells in his world. Lord, show me the secret of prosperity. My son David, my prosperity plan is not a promise. That's a person speaking. So it does not answer to prayers. It's not a promise. There's no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant until your part is played. I'm not committed. Showed up from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. And now, how reliable is this covenant? Except my covenant be not with the day and with the night. If I'm not appointed the ordinance of heaven, then may also my covenant with my servant David be broken, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priest, my minister. So, my agenda for the redeemed, praise God, Amen. is guaranteed. That's what he's talking about. Because I've been redeemed as priests and kings, and we shall reign on the earth. The world. He showed up to me from Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 in my studies. 
my son. There's a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, I'm interested. I said, whatever thing I tell you to do, therefore do it. If you hearken to my voice, observe to do what I tell you to do, I say to her above all nations of the earth. Now, that's a person speaking. That's the resurrected Christ who said, I will come to you. You are, you are going to meet him. Before this 40 day season is over, you are singing a new song. He will show you the right side to cast your net, to invest your energy, to invest your time, to invest your resources. You shall not misinvest your energy. You shall not misinvest your time. You shall not misinvest your resources in the name of Jesus Christ. He's there. Always there. To qualify for an encounter with God. Number two. One must crave for a quiet environment. Reason. He comes through to us through a still small voice. A loud life, a noisome life, we always have a problem. Experience and encounter. Is that through desire? A man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. Proverbs 18.1. You desire an encounter, create an environment that will make it happen. Shut your door, tell him, Jesus, I need an answer to this question in my life. And then with a true heart, he shows up. We need to create a quiet environment. I was in my office someday 1985 December and then I had pasted on my notice board, my office board where I put my issues so I can look at them, pray over them, speak to them. And I had my schedule for 1986 pasted on the board. So I was looking at it. He said, remove that thing. I wasn't praying. I was just looking. I said, remove that thing. I said, why, Lord? He said, that's not my plan. What's your plan? You shall take root downward before you bear fruit upward. Thank God, it will have scuttled the church growth revival that was going on then. It cleared the way. You see, the, the resurrected Christ is always showing up, but people don't have the environment that gives them access to what he's saying. You can't have an I sat in that same office and I heard him say to me, give me that thing. He pointed to the car that was parked outside. And joy filled my soul, man. When God speaks, joy fills the soul. Say, blessed are they that hear the joyful sound. God does not depress people. Praise God. God's word does not depress people. He said, thy words were found and I did eat them. And the word, thy word became the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Oh my God. God's word does not depress people. It's Satan's word that depresses people. My heart rejoiced and I went to my wife's office and I said, God just asked that. As for that car, she said, praise the Lord. Now, on my way home the same day, hear what God said. After work, my son, David, even if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. Life, there is no missing word. I've not changed. That cement has not changed ever since I started sharing it. And as my custom is, whatever he shows me in secret, I shout on the house top. I told them. I didn't tell them what happened, but I told them what God said. That he made a demand and joy came into my heart. And I heard him say to me, my son David, if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. Quiet times are times of opportunities to secure an encounter with God. My, my prayer 
is that before this 40 days is over, mm, you will meet him. Amen. You will hear him. Amen. It will change your story. Amen. So create that environment. The bottom line remains be spiritual. Live in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Be spiritual. Live in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Settle with the world. Settle with the world. This season must not be theoretical in your life. It must be real. In the name of Jesus. I was in my study and I got to um, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, Revised Standard Version. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. The plans of welfare and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. That's the way it rendered it. And I heard them say to me, your future is in my plan, not in your plan. Sweet words. That got me addicted to his plan in spite of my views. And see what that has done for our ministry today. So it can meet you anywhere. Therefore, remain in the spirit. Remain a man and a woman of the spirit. God can manifest himself to anywhere, to us anywhere, and at any time. Peter had an encounter with Christ while going about his fishing business. And he has not changed. So what I say to one, I say to all, watch. It can come to you on your prayer altar, watch. It can come to you while you are studying the word, watch. It can come to you while you are reading anointed books, Watch. It can come to you while you are traveling on a journey. Watch. The 40 days is now come down from Sunday to Tuesday and I mean, to Monday to Tuesday. Three days gone. This is the fourth day. Don't let this season pass you by without a testimony of definite encounter coming along with infallible proofs. In your life. So God said. I know my sheep. And they know my voice. So it's not a gift that somebody has. Another man doesn't have. Every child of God. Has access to the voice of God. Every child of God. Is a candidate for divine encounters. Every child of God. Is a candidate for encounter. With the resurrected Christ. Every child of God. Just. Let your heart be connected to heaven. It's not about age. It's all about a heart that is set for God. You shall seek for me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Therefore, what I say to you, I say to all. Jesus speaking to his disciples, watch. I'm coming to show up. And 40 days after every Easter service, he shows himself alive 40 days after. 40 days after. Because it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Stand to your feet. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Would you speak to the day? I declare today as my day of unique encounter. My day of diverse encounters with the resurrected Christ. My day of encounters through the world. My day of encounters through my quiet moments so I can assess the still small voice. I declare today as my day of encounter. No distractions. No kind of thoughts. No healthy words. A 
in the name of Jesus. The good news is the coronavirus is dead. Amen. The good news is that human race is rescued. Amen. The good news is that the nations are opening up. Amen. The good news is that every aspect of human life will be restored back to normal. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Coronavirus shall kill no more. Amen. It shall kill no more. Amen. It has done the last. Amen. It will not happen anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Give God thanks, everybody. Well, tonight, please be reminded that we have a midway service, and the time is 6 p.m., and it will be transmitted live, and Jesus will show up. Every manner of sickness, every manner of disease shall not only be healed, but you'll be given authority over them. Amen. You'll be given authority over them. Amen. You'll be walking in dominion over sickness and disease all the days of your life. Amen. So come ready, and it's also going to be an, uh, you know, a communion service. Come ready and get your communion item by your side, wherever you are around the world. There's going to be a new beginning, Amen. a new dawn. Amen. From this month onward, if Jesus tarries the next 50 years, you are still jumping. Amen. You are still shouting. Amen. The reality of divine health. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Give God thanks.